Hi, I'm Cassie Pekarski, Director of Strategic Initiatives for the Truman Library Institute and your host for 75 in 5. As part of the Truman Library Institute's commemoration of the 75th anniversary of the Truman Administration, 75 and 5 will highlight the important moments and significant developments that led to some of Harry Truman's biggest decisions. Today we're going to look at the 75th anniversary of the fall of 1946 through the galleries of the new permanent exhibition at the Harry S. Truman Presidential Library and Museum. First, let's step inside the Civil Rights Gallery, which details July 25th, 1946, when Roger Malcolm, his wife Dorothy, who was seven months pregnant, George Dorothy and his wife May were violently murdered by a group of white men in what later became known as the Monroe Massacre. These killings spurred national outrage and reached President Truman. On July 30th, 1946, Attorney General Tom Clark announced that Truman had instructed the Justice Department to proceed with all of its resources to investigate this and other crimes of oppression to determine if any federal statute could be applied. On September 12th, 1946, Truman wrote in a letter to the National Urban League that the government has an obligation to see that the civil rights of every citizen are fully and equally protected. A week later, Truman met with the National Emergency Committee Against Mob Violence, a group of 42 organizations called together by the NAACP. They discussed specific steps to secure more adequate legislation to stop the violence against African Americans. A section of the new exhibition entitled Justice Not Revenge in the Postwar World Gallery details the Nuremberg Trials. The trials began on November 20th, 1945 in Nuremberg, Germany, with Supreme Court Justice Robert Jackson serving as chief counsel. When the trial of major war criminals ended on October 1st, 1946, 24 individuals were tried and all but three were found guilty. Twelve were sentenced to death and the rest were given sentences ranging from 10 years to life in prison. In accepting Jackson's recognition at the end of the trial, Truman wrote to Jackson on October 17, 1946, the principles established and the results achieved place international law on the side of peace as against aggressive warfare. In the Recognition of Israel Gallery, there's a timeline of steps towards recognition, which provides details of Truman's October 4, 1946 statement on the eve of Yom Kippur in support of a viable Jewish state. Truman urged that substantial immigration into Palestine of 100,000 Jewish refugees begin at once. He recommended changes to the immigration laws of the United States and other countries to admit displaced persons, and offered to propose a plan to Congress for economic assistance if a workable solution for Palestine was devised. He closed his statement in saying, the administration will continue to do everything it can to this end. Back in the post-war world gallery, there are tensions growing in post-war America. As the 1946 midterm elections loomed, the Republican slogan was, had enough? With an approval rating of 33%, few campaigning de Democrats ever mentioned Truman's name. Truman returned to Independence to vote on November 5th, 1946 with his daughter, Margaret, and started back to Washington the same day before the polls had closed, but arranged to have the election returns brought on board about every 100 miles. Truman started a game of poker with several Washington reporters in his private car and only looked at the election returns from Independence, which Margaret brought into him. After viewing the results that did not go his way, Truman shook his head and smiled at her saying, why bother with this sort of thing? Don't worry about me. I know how things will turn out and they'll be all right. Democrats lost both houses of Congress for the first time since the Great Depression. In the view of Charlie Ross and others in the administration, the turning point, the elections were a real turning point for Truman. Ross told White House reporters that the real Truman administration began the day after the elections. As Truman biographer David McCullough summarized the situation, the sweeping Republican triumph had given Truman a new lease on life, freeing him from the shadow of Franklin Roosevelt. Truman wrote to Bess on November 18, 1946, I'm doing as I damn please for the next two years and to hell with all of them. Truman did quite well doing as he pleased over the next two years, but that's for another installment of 75 in 5. 
If you enjoyed what you heard today, follow the Truman Library Institute on Facebook and visit our website to sign up for our email newsletter for updates on programs, events, symposiums, and more 75 and 5 episodes, highlighting the legacy of our 33rd president. Details and links are in the comments below. Until next time, as Truman once said, do your best, history will do the rest.